And once again, James Webb Space Telescope discovered more unusual stuff somewhere out there at the edges of the universe. Although in this video, we're mostly focusing on galaxies, some of the most distant galaxies we've ever seen and various unusual discoveries coming out of them. But first I wanted to start with these two images. This first image, this is the famous Hubble Ultra Deep Field. This used to be the most incredible space image ever produced. When Hubble was able to capture thousands of different galaxies, in this image there are actually 10,000, after looking in the middle of empty dark space, producing this beautiful long exposure you see right here. And even though other telescopes saw nothing, Hubble discovered thousands of different galaxies. But then the James Webb did something similar and even with a much shorter exposure, discovered at least three times more galaxies without even trying. With some of these galaxies, when zoomed in, appearing something like this. And that's just to show you how absolutely incredible this telescope is at literally seeing everything Hubble could not see and helping us reveal features from the edge of the universe that even right now are still sort of difficult to explain. And one of the most recent images released just a few days ago was actually this. This particular image is really unique because it shows us the different shapes of very ancient galaxies. This telescope is literally powerful enough to be able to tell a shape of a galaxy billions and billions of light years away from us. Even Hubble could not do this. And the discoveries were actually kind of surprising. You can learn about all of this in the study any description, but in essence the scientists discovered that the shapes here were a lot more stretched compared to galaxies today. As a matter of fact, the farther back in time you look, the more stretched they appear. Here they looked at various galaxies either from the beginning of the universe when the universe was only 600 million years old or a little bit more recently when the universe was already 6 billion years old. Allowing them to classify these galaxies into basically four main types. Spheroid, oblate, oval or prolate. In simpler terms, volleyball, frisbee, surfboard or pool noodle. Although in their study they also used a lot more food-like terms like breadsticks and bananas. But that's just basically to describe the shape of the galaxies they observed. And so intriguingly, the galaxies in the very early universe were either very flat or very long. Basically resembling either a surfboard or a kind of a pool noodle. And this appeared to be true for 50 to even 80% of all galaxies at these very far distances. So not all of them, but more than half. They all seem to be flattened in two dimensions. Yet much closer galaxies, the ones that were at least a few billion years old or basically existed when the universe was much older, were mostly disk-like or even spherical in appearance. But intriguingly, spherical galaxies were almost completely absent in the beginning. And so interestingly, these oblate, oval and prolate galaxies were pretty much all over the place, yet are almost completely absent billions of years later. And the question here was, okay, why? Why is this happening? Is this some kind of a visual illusion? Is this due to the expansion of the universe? Or is this something else entirely different? Well, at the moment there's only one hypothetical explanation. And it's basically in regards to the mysterious cosmic web. Because the early universe was filled with a lot of filaments of dark matter and the cosmic web was a lot more dense, it's quite likely that it must have pushed and pulled the gas around with a lot more ferocity and thus disturbed galaxies, stretching them a lot more. And so basically because of the interaction of the cosmic web with galaxies containing gas and various stars, in the first billion years or so, it potentially stretched some galaxies to look very different from anything we have today. But as the filament dispersed and as things became more diffuse, and obviously as the universe expanded, the stretching and squeezing of galaxies must have become a lot less frequent, allowing galaxies to assume more spherical shapes and preventing galaxies from stretching too much. But that's of course just one initial explanation and in truth nobody knows exactly what's happening just yet. Still a really exciting discovery. With the other discovery coming from the now famous galaxy known as GNZ11. We've discussed this galaxy a few years back because this basically became the record holder for the farthest galaxy observed. But this record was beat pretty fast when the James Webb became operational. Nevertheless, GNZ11 is still a really intriguing galaxy. It's still one of the most distant to date and is located at a redshift of 11. Very very early in the universe, approximately 13.4 billion years ago or when the universe was about 430 million years old and intriguingly at a distance of nearly 32 billion light years away from us. Yet interestingly, we can actually see it. 
And even though it's actually really small, approximately 4,000 light years across, or something like 20 times smaller than the Milky Way galaxy, one of the reasons we can see it is because it's also extremely bright. Its brightness is approximately 5 times higher than the Eddington limit, or 5 times higher than the physical limit for a typical galaxy of this size. With this galaxy containing a lot of young stars, very bright stars, very likely 20 to 30 million years old in total. So essentially a super young, super bright, very active galaxy. Although recently, researchers also identified at least 9 much dimmer neighbors, suggesting that all of this vigorous star formation is basically a result of some kind of a galactic interaction and possibly collision. But more interestingly, recent studies focused on its very compact, extremely bright center. The center containing a massive black hole. And here they did find signs of black hole accretion. Basically a black hole producing a very large accretion disk and emitting a lot of bright light and huge amounts of energy. And based on these calculations, at the rate this black hole is currently feeding, it's most likely going to actually shut down this galaxy completely as the black hole emits so much galactic wind that all of the gas is pushed out of the system, stopping the star formation completely. This is referred to as the galactic quenching, and it's a process that literally kills galaxies. And for the galaxy of this size, this black hole is enormous. Remember, this galaxy is 25 times smaller than the Milky Way galaxy, but its black hole is 6 million solar masses, 50% larger than the one in the Milky Way. It also produces very fast winds, moving at over a thousand kilometers per second, with all of this basically blowing away everything in the process. And all of this information gathered from this tiny dot you see right here. Although well, intriguingly, if you look at this image, there are even farther objects in here that have not been investigated yet. But they're all very likely the same. Extremely bright, very very small galaxies growing really fast, with potentially massive black holes in the middle. And that's actually our next mystery. The unusual mystery of central black holes in various distant galaxies. Here we had two intriguing studies that discovered something very different. One was focusing on quasars, or essentially very very bright galactic black holes, that existed billions of years after the Big Bang, and that's of course objects we understand pretty well today, but the other one mostly focused on black holes in a much more distant galaxy. And mostly in galaxies that were just growing, and were not necessarily quasars, just regular galaxies that were slightly more active. And so when looking at these very distant galaxies, or at least 21 distant galaxies, researchers discovered that the farther back in time you go, the much more massive black holes get compared to the actual galaxy. Or in other words, the ratio between the black hole and the galaxy changed quite dramatically. In the local universe, or even the universe that's at least 2 to 3 billion years old, the average ratio between the black hole and the central galaxy is usually about 1000 to 1. So if you have a central black hole whose mass is approximately 1 million solar masses, the galaxy is going to have a mass of about 1 billion solar masses. Or at least that was the average discovered previously. But the galaxy that were slightly farther away suddenly had this ratio drop dramatically. First 100 to 1, then even 10 to 1, and sometimes even 1 to 1. Or basically you would have galaxies whose central black hole is exactly the same mass as the rest of the galaxy. Which is of course a somewhat surprising discovery. But it's an important discovery because it tells us that a lot of these massive black holes very likely formed as a result of what's known as the heavy black hole seed formation. The idea that black holes most likely began as a lot of mass suddenly collapsed in the center, forming from a really large dust cloud 10 to even 100,000 solar masses in mass all at once. Because there's really no other way to explain how these black holes can exist so early on in the universe. But intriguingly, when looking at those quasars, the discovery was somewhat different. And here the researchers basically looked at the host galaxy compared to the central quasar, or the central very bright active black hole, in the process of discovering that the ratio here was, surprisingly, very similar to what we expect from local galaxies. And that is a somewhat interesting discovery because it's basically telling us the opposite. And that means that either quasars have their own way of growing and developing with the galaxy, thus making them somewhat different from a typical galaxy, it just means that by the time quasars became active and visible from everywhere, the black hole to galaxy ratio has already possibly stabilized. Although in this case, it is kind of interesting because some of these quasars seem to have existed just 860 million years after the Big Bang. Yet those other galaxies that existed around the same time contained much more massive black holes compared to the galaxy itself. So yeah, a bit of a mystery without an actual answer for now. 
but it just means that maybe quasars grow differently, develop differently, and change the galaxy around themselves differently as well. And then on the completely opposite spectrum, there was also a discovery of the farthest ever quiescent galaxy, or basically the galaxy that's no longer active, no longer produces any stars, and is very likely a progenitor of giant elliptical galaxies that usually form some of the largest galaxies in the universe. A galaxy at a redshift of 2.3, or basically when the universe was approximately 2.8 billion years old, and a galaxy that despite being really difficult to see, is still visible to the James Webb. And here it actually looks like the galaxy was already kind of quiet for at least half a billion years. But in this case, it was not because of the black hole. It must have been because of additional galaxies nearby. They most likely just stole a lot of mass from this galaxy, stripping all of the gas from it, leaving nothing for star production. And so a very different way for a galaxy to stop producing stars. For these early galaxies, black holes are usually the biggest culprits, but for galaxies like this one, it can also be its partners. Although here it's really the discovery itself that's really amazing. Being able to see an extremely dim galaxy so far away and then even be able to tell what actually happened to it in the process. And that's of course the power of the James Webb Space Telescope. But at least for now that's kind of all I wanted to mention. We're going to come back and talk more about other discoveries from the James Webb, including discoveries from our own galaxy. But for now, thank you for watching, check out some of the previous videos in the description, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. One of them does have James Webb as the main design. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.